David Ford, but I can't never mind up. Like who's gonna start in the lineup? Anthony Martial, it's time up. It's CR7 a striker. Jaden Sancho on the right wing, left wing, it's Rasho Pogba this season, man arising. What? What? David Ford, but I can't make my mind up. Like who's gonna start in the lineup? Anthony Martial, it's time up. It's CR7 a striker. Jaden Sancho on the right wing, left wing, it's Rasho Pogba this season, man arise and conquer. What? Look, remember to like, comment, subscribe, support the team, follow on TikTok at OT99 Bantering, Twitter at 99 Banter, and Instagram at OT99 underscore Bantering. Follow on YouTube, OT99 Bantering, if you want the full video. Peace. Yo, this is the OT99 Bantering where opinions are shared and smart gets served. Look, we're back again with another show. It's your boy Firms, and I'm tuned in today with NK. And today we are going to talk about Manchester United, the end of the transfer window, the signings that we've made. We're going to talk about Kamavinga and some news on that. We're going to talk about, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, he's the main topic. We're going to talk about Jaden Sancho. We're going to talk about our team lineup now, you know, going into the Newcastle game uh, and how the team looked like before, you know, um, and comparing the two. What our expectations are for this season and that's about it. So we'll get into it. So let's talk about Cristiano Ronaldo because he is the main event. He is the main sort of topic here and to you know, to be quite frank, Henry, um, this is one of those ones where I'm now coming to grips that, you know, he's a Manchester United player now, again. I'm now coming to understand that, you know, I'm, the, 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 you know, the store, the, the settling down now, starting to realise that, you know, and seeing pictures on social media, him and his family's in Manchester in the sunny beaches, you know, getting sun pans, he's chills on a good day. And quite frankly, he's here. I saw even a house that he's staying in, a mansion. It looks crazy in Manchester. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, he is here. Um, and do you know what? For everyone that had doubts at Manchester United signing Cristiano Ronaldo, um, hopefully the game, you know, the Portugal game a couple of nights ago will go to show that, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo still got it. Do you know what I mean? He's a guy that still... Got it. He fights to the very end. And as you can see, he scored goals in the 85th minute and in the, what is it, 95th minute. And that's just someone, the mentality that you need at this club. But look, NK, this goes to you. Cristiano Ronaldo is at Manchester United. What are your expectations with Cristiano Ronaldo at our club? You know what? I think... The biggest expectation that I go with like straight away, everybody game is going to raise up. You know, if right now, if everybody was playing, let's say, gear seven or whatever, like they were playing, like giving like seven out of 10, straight away, everybody, and that includes even the manager itself, everything is going to be have to be 10 out of 10 yes. because you go a born winner. All he want to do is win. Nothing is acceptable to him. You know, Ronaldo, is, he's the kind of guy that uh, his team can win like about 3-0 and if he doesn't score, he still feels some type of way. Mm. And that is the kind of a guy you go. Like, he's a sore loser. And people who are sore losers too, they always want to win. Whether it's in training, whether it's on the page, like nothing is always good enough for them because they always want to say something. And that is what I think United will need. I know for the last kind of like few years going, the team in terms of like leadership, has improved a bit, you know, you go like a lot of like leadership people kind of approve, but this take the leadership thing to a whole top notch, you know, it take a whole of kind of like top notch, people are going to expect us more, defenders are going to be scared, so the expectation itself is just, that, that is one of the things, the expectation of Manchester United players, the manager, the club as a whole, has now gone up like three bars up, three mm. bars up, mm. and I can't wait for how everybody start to perform now that Ronaldo is there. Look, I think you hit the nail on the head. I feel like the expectation is going to be much higher. I feel like the fear factor is there. And for a long time, like for the first time in a long time, I, you know, we've got guys like Ibrahimovic and we've brought in star quality like that. And he's done well at his time at Manchester United. We've brought in so many like stars, you know, loan deals or whatever. But this is the first time I sat down and thought, you know what? This team, right, that this team here, is capable of winning, you know, the league. I've, I, this is the real, like, it's been, if, if I've ever been closer to feeling that way, it's now. 
Do you know what I mean? Other times it's been a bit like, you know, a bit of optimism. You know, maybe can we go on to do it if we perform well? Like, this is the team with the signings that we've done. I mean, I saw an article somewhere and we all know this information, but it will just put into, uh, you know, clear, clear day like that, you know, Manchester United spent 120 million and Manchester United managed to acquire Varane, Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo with 120 million. It That on top of what we already have, the team that finished second in the league, the team that got to a final final of Europa League, for me, the minimum I expect is trophies. And I feel like Manchester United got everything. We've got enough to win trophies. So there is no excuses. I mean, there really is. I mean, I sat there before um, and I was thinking, you know what? Oli, can I trust him? Can I trust Oli to go on and lift titles? But do you know what? People then go on to say, Oli depends on star quality players, individual performances. Look, Oli's just went and bought three of the best individual performance you can you know you can purchase in their positions so if he's dependent on individual performances look he's got the tools to do that so right. as, as far as i'm concerned i expect to see titles and another thing as well is and we're going to get it up to the midfield a bit in a minute but what it is is we had the money obviously to buy a midfielder we haven't gone in to buy a midfielder so the expectation is there that like obviously you know you've prioritized these positions so with those positions we expect you to go and win titles because right. if not, you're losing your job. But um, I agree with you, man. I feel like the bar is set. I feel like teams are going to be scared again. I feel like when we're walking down the tunnel, they're seeing Cristiano Ronaldo, they're seeing Cavani, they're seeing Rashford, they're seeing Martial, they're seeing Greenwood, they're seeing Bruno, they're seeing Pop. Look, it's endless. It's endless. Talent. Right. It, it, it is endless. Can you believe, like, see that game against Southampton? Can you believe United are playing against Southampton? It's 1 1. And then the 75th minute players are just like passing it slow and stuff like that. You just look at Ronaldo and Ronaldo just going to tell you like, just, do, <laughs> yes, no, just give it like, he, the spirit that he's going to tell him like, just move the ball because he can. And you know, sometimes that's what you, you need to do. You just need that one person to just channel it to just let you know that I am not accepting a draw and let's push each other and go for that win. And you know, it was the same thing against Ireland too. You know, it was 1-0. And then you can just tell straight away there, look, it is a qualifier. This is not a game that they, they have to win to win a trophy. It's a qualifier. Even if they draw that game, there's still opportunities to still like get first or second place and still make it to the World Cup. But you know what? He go one goal and then he's like, no, that's not enough. I want oh. the second. I want to win this game. And then he wanted to come over. And when you have a player like that on the pitch, you always believe. All you have to do is, look, if I create one decent chance, he's going to take the chance. Yeah. And that is a whole confident boost itself. I dare you to take Ronaldo off when you know <laughs> that he can do stuff in the 90th minute, you know? So let me let me touch on some topics then because, I mean, some some sort of, sort of, not topics, let me touch on some achievements, some achievements right now. Uh, one of very recent, and this is the one of very recent. So let me bring it up. Okay, so... Where are you? There we are. So after three days, I mean, this is this is a financial achievement, but we, we just goes to show the sort of the clout of Cristiano Ronaldo. So it says after three days of negotiations with Manchester City, no, not that one. Sorry, this one. Where is it? Cristiano Ronaldo so as has broke as broken the Premier League record of shirt sales. That's two hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred and four hundred and six thousand two hundred and fifty shirts have been sold in just 12 hours after release um it then goes on to say uh, that um man united made 32.5 million from fans buying Cristiano ronaldo's number seven kit in 12 hours a premier league record after a number was announced look all of those people are saying how can you know be buying Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, he's he's is it's not worth it. He's 36. Um, you're paying him what is it, four, five hundred K a week. Look, Man United's already made the money back in, in sales. If not, if the money is not going into the financial coffers of Manchester United, you know a good proportion of it is at least going into. And the thing about Cristiano Ronaldo and the uh, thing about it yeah, with 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 um guys like him who's a he's a brand, he's someone that comes along with millions and millions and millions of followers he's that one of the footballers that's most followed most known in the world like athletes not even just footballers he's massive 
um, Twitter, massive Instagram following, massive, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And you're bringing that back to Manchester United. Remember, you've got some, a lot of these fans is not tied to a club. They're tied to CR7, the brand. And it's now brought that all back into Manchester United. And people say, you know, uh, you know, he's past it. But my, look, this is the guy where you're bringing all that fan base back into the club. The money's taking care of itself. Sponsors will be dying to get involved. Shirts obviously get sold, as you can see. Other merchandise from Manchester United will be sold on the website. Clicks will be happening all like all over the world because it's Cristiano Ronaldo. You know when Manchester United is like, oh, we want to bring up this, you know, we want clicks. You see newspapers trying to get clicks. This is what Manchester United is going to be getting with Cristiano Ronaldo there. The website is going to be, the website crashed. You know what I mean? With, with, with the announcement of Cristiano Ronaldo. So stuff like that. So it's just like, there's many ways finances be flowing back into the club. And for me, I feel like it's light work that we're paying someone of the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, who's still in his prime, that sort of money. And paid what? Is it only 20 million? Like something, give or take around 20 million euros? Yeah, you know what? Forget that about the money aspect of it. Because look, and he, whatever we know, brings. we know, we know players like that is going to come with peace. Like, you're going to have to pay them with peace, anyways. Because my, uh, my idea, like, players, like, star players always demand like, those kind of like, wages. You look at Messi, Messi went to PSG too. The same yeah. thing, too, you know. Yeah. He's going to get like share, share sales. PSG are going to give him pay a lot of money, but they're going to make money off him, too. But with Ronaldo, the money that my United are going to make is not going to be compared to how PSG are going to make from Messi, you know. Yeah. The guy, I think his Twitter, I'm not sure if it's Twitter or his Instagram, I think it's Twitter, he got 94 million followers. Manchester United got 26 million followers. That is a huge big jump of like followers that he got. So yeah. ma- marketing wise, you know what, we, we United too, we've always said in the past that, you know what, marketing, we are the king of it. We know how to make money just on the pitch. That's what we, 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 we struggle with. Now, if you look at the marketing aspect of it, I think a lot of people were worried that now that Woodward is going to leave, it might affect yeah. us kind of like attracting like sponsorship yeah. because that was one of the things that he was very good at the commercial side. But yeah. with Ronaldo, a lot of brands will now want to do deals with us. Now, you talk about some of the people that are already there, might are going to feel like, mm, we should increase their, 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 their money because when yeah. we got them, we didn't have this money there. Yeah. You know, like look at Team Viewer, for example, now they're going to have people like Ronaldo not directly promoting them, but indirectly, Ronaldo is going to be promoting them too. Because my United players do in-house advertisement for all these sponsorship people too. You yeah. know, so all this money just there. So commercially, bro, we are in good hands. And the more money we make commercially, the more it go onto transfer business, which you know what is good. Klopp was like, "How does my United make all this money?" Well, there you go. This is how we make okay. our money. Look at that, look at that. Let me try and zoom in. Let me see if I can get a, a zoom out, zoom out there. Cristiano yeah, Ronaldo, number one, yeah. uh, 92 million. 92 million, yeah. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit messy, but you... Uh, I can see it. Go back a bit, go back a bit. Uh, it's a bit I messy. I can see it, but yeah, it was there. It was there. They know anyway, uh, they can go shit. 92 million, 92 million, <laughs> followed by Neymar, 53.4, followed by Merz, Merzel Ozil, which is surprising, 26.1, and then Iniesta. But besides the money, because I mean... We talk about the money. We're naturally going to talk about money because it's Christian. You know what I mean? That big players, they generate all of this stuff. But naturally, we touched on it earlier. Cristiano Ronaldo brings so much work. We had Fab, um, the, the Silver Twins talking about it this week, about how much Cristiano Ronaldo left a lifelong impression. The things that they learned of him, the advice he's given, the sort of poetry and motion what they saw on the pitch from Cristiano Ronaldo is something that they'll live with for the rest of their life they'll keep you saw Elanga the new generation coming through being interviewed and talking about speaking highly of Cristiano Ronaldo saying as well that he was starstruck when he saw him and he's going to be feeding off him and he's going to be asking all the questions and he's going to be basically taking everything in whilst he can look this is a second chance for our youngsters this is perfect timing for our youngsters to be able to tap into Cristiano Ronaldo who's basically travelled the world and come back home and achieved everything he can do. We've got guys at Manchester United where we're like, you know what? These are talents. These are guys, you know, they're not really consistent. Ronaldo's been one of the most consistent players in the world for the last, God knows how many, over a decade plus. And you've got guys like Martial who could be tapping into that knowledge. Greenwood tapping into that knowledge. Rashford tap, tap, t- um, tapping into that knowledge. You've got Luke Shaw, everyone, not just attackers, 
because they can learn how a winning mentality is, how you should never give up, how you should put an extra on and off the pitch. You see, Cristiano Ronaldo, I read a funny um, sort of story of Chris, um, Patrice Evra. He said that one time he went to, he was invited to Cristiano Ronaldo's house for sort of like lunch, whatever. Cristiano Ronaldo served him like plain chicken and salad um, to eat. And everyone was just like, what, what's this? Ate this. Then he said, after that, let's play two-touch football. Then after that, he said, oh, let's go for a swim. And Everett said, you know what, guys, if you're invited to Cristiano Ronaldo's house, don't go because this guy never stops working. He's always working, working. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how many years ago that is, but this guy is very consistent, both on and off, off the pitch and on the pitch. And you look at him, 36-year-old, do you see when he scored that late last-minute goal? He whipped off his, his top. Look, well, you've well, got I saw, guys... I saw, I, saw, I saw that picture. And you know Bro. what? This is what I'm just trying to tell you about. Like, everybody game is going to race. You know, like you go there and let's just say Ronaldo go, score, like say two goals, like the game before. And the next day, he like you as a, another forward that played next to him, you had a terrible game. The next day, he's in training. After training, he's shooting, he's practicing headers and stuff like that. And you that had a terrible game, you're going to say, hey, you know what? I finished training, I'm going to go home. And he's like, I scored two goals and I'm still training had here mm. you can just tell yourself like you will not even be upset if you are in the training so that's the kind of a standard that is going to be going to benefit guys like uh, i mean uh rashford because rashford has trying to build his game a bit towards how ronaldo is you see the way he tried to take like free kick and everything so he's going to perfect that too you know yeah. if ronaldo stay behind say he, he's he, he's learning how to shoot and everything <laughs> just know guys like rashford is going to be next to him Bruno yeah. is going to be there next to him too and whoever is going to be next to him too they're just going to like stay because you don't want to be look like the guy that he's training and I'm not going to be the guy to kind of train you have to step up your game because yeah. your manager is going to be looking at all this work efforts you know to just say okay these guys were working hard so let me just like they deserve to be in the team you know when they were shooting and stuff like that and if you start playing badly they're going to say it's because you're not training hard as these guys are training you know so, I think commercially it's a win for my United. Leadership is a win for my United. Now let's just see how performance-wise is, is going to be uh, going forward for United. But I have no doubt about that. I really have no doubt about that. I think it was like, you no, know, I mean, I'm I'm excited. And you know, comes what is it, Saturday, three p.m. against Newcastle. Look, I am going to be there, front row, in front of my TV screen, watching that game. Do you know what I mean? So, on to George Mendes though. Like, I feel like he. Obviously, he's Ronaldo's agent. He manages a raft of superstars. Um, and he also, you know, manages you know, Jose Mourinho as well. Um, and he's one of the two super agents, I would say, because obviously we've got Guardiola, who is there, who um, also manages like the likes of Pogba and stuff like that. And, he, and Haaland, as you know. Um, and he is also another super agent. But let's go on to George Mendes. So George Mendes, so I read something where... He was sort of negotiating with Man City um, for, you know, a number of days, about three days. Um, and sort of after that, he went on to start to talk to Manchester United uh, about the Cristiano deal. And um, things accelerated rapidly and really fast. And the deal obviously got done. I mean, I had we had Man City um, fans mocking our whole fan base, mocking us, saying, oh, you know, he's coming to us. Um, I, we was basically in states of depression, a number of our fans thinking, you know, they can't, they couldn't just manage to bear that sort of stuff. But with the way it moved so rapidly, it almost made me think that it was a masterstroke from George Mendes, you know. I don't ever think that Ronaldo was really going to go to Manchester City. I really do. I mean, he could have, maybe, I don't know, but I just feel like the way it moved just made me feel that was a masterstroke from George Mendes and he, he planned it well. Um he, he sort of got us moving and obviously Manchester United is playing for us uh, but what's your thoughts on it do you feel like he was a masterstroke or do you think he would have actually moved to sea you know what I feel like it was a masterstroke but you know what I, they they already knew what they wanted to do before the season ended in Italy because yeah. when the season ended uh, I saw these pictures where a, a big car came and took all Ronaldo luxury cars literally from where he lives so you can tell that he was already planning his exit. But I feel like they were more planning to kind of like try get to PSG. 
I feel like PSG was more of a destination that they were looking at to go. They were not looking to kind of like do a Man City kind of like deal. I think PSG was the place that they thought was going to go. But once that Messi deal fell through and then Messi went there, they they they, they, they felt like, okay. Because if you look at it, they yeah. planned it carefully. You know, yeah. even when he came back from the season, he did not expect to move. I only felt like that move, they hit that kind of like speed bump when they found out that when Harry Kane came up and made that statement to say that he is no longer going to sit. I feel when they came up, they just knew that there was an opening because they they wanted to go to a club where one, those clubs can pay for their finances. And if you look at the whole world, there were only probably, you, you could say, a few clubs that can do that. PSG is one that could afford this kind of like big players wages too. Uh, Man City is another one too. My United is another one too. And then maybe some of the English club, depending on how the deal is kind of like structured, you know. So once Messi went to PSG, that door was closed for them. So they just thought, okay, you know what, we're going to bid our time. We're going to just try and just kind of like play the Juventus and see what happened with Mbappe. If Mbappe go, can they afford to kind of like sign another player or not? So they were kind of like monitoring where they can push their client to go. Mm. But City have always made Hurricane their number one. So the minute, if you watch it, the story became more there. Because up to that point, no one was talking about Christian Ronaldo moving from Juventus. They, they made these rumors that he might go to Real. And then he came out to just shut it down that there was nothing to do with Real because they have not had, no team was actually saying, like, hey, we want it like that. So when Ken came, came, came out to say, hey, you know what? I am staying at Tottenham. And everybody knew how bad Man City needed a striker. And what kind of like striker do you need more like Cristiano Ronaldo is a striker. So straight away, they're like, hey, if City had 100 million to spend on a striker and then now they cannot get a striker, we can be the guy that kind of like go in there and solve their solution for like a year or two while they kind of try to get their main target because they lost a big goal scorer too. So that's when they approach City. So people that are thinking like, oh, he was never going to go to City. Trust me, Ronaldo was going to go to City if my United thing. So I feel like that's when it went. They went to City and when the noise kind of like started kind of like going on to say, hey, he might go to City. I feel like a lot of people at my United kind of like started to feel some type of way, including the supporters, you know, the, the, the managers and, and, you know, uh, Bruno. And I could tell you, Bruno, I mean, you, you can hear that there's a story about Bruno actually called Ronaldo say like, hey, yo, are you really going there? So if Bruno talk to him, it's like he's actually kind of about going there. Cause, and then straight away, you know what Bruno's going to do? He's going to talk to Ole. Like, are you actually going to let this happen? You know how <laughs> when, when someone see your girl out, <laughs> to some different, and then they call like, yo, bro, I just see your girl doing some madness, you know? <laughs> so he must have gone to Ole say, hey, look, Ronaldo's about to go to City. And you know what? I grew up analyzing Ronaldo in a mind, I just said. And if he go there, trust me, it is no good. It is just no good business here. You know, it's like having your number one competitor setting up a store right next to you. You know, that you kind of like feel like you envied, like you, this is the guy that you learn everything from. So straight away, I feel like that is what started the chain. When you have these big players going up to the board, going up to like, you know what, because they, they, they got direct contact with guys like Woodward. They're going to tell you like, look, are you really going to sit here to let this happen? And that's what's going to happen. And you know what? I told you, clubs are united. Big clubs always have money to spend. So all this thing, like, they always have money to spend when they have to. So when it got crazy, boom, you know what? Let's tap into that loan. Let's go there. If you can get loan to pay dividends, let's tap into that loan. So you know what? Straight away, they call Mendes to say, yo, we are interested too. And then once that deal become a pound that they are interested to. You just know there was only one place. But if it was, a, if Man United, if Mendes talked to them beginning of the summer that he wanted to come, trust me, they would have found a, they would have tried to pound up and play ball with the whole deal. It was the City deal that influenced it. But from what I've been hearing too, City were not that keen on taking him. They were willing to take him if they didn't have to pay no transfer fee. But I feel like the City factor moved it. But the whole thing kind of like, you could say it was a genius thing, yeah. but trust me, he did not even know my United were going to be interested after like three or four days into it. <laughs> it's funny because uh, Khabib mentioned that 
you know, he, he knew a month ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, that was just rubbish. Even Ronaldo himself did not know. He did not know. Because if he knew, he would not have even gone back to Juventus after preseason. He just did not know. He just, just the same way that Messi did not know that he was going to end up in PSG. Yeah. And, you know, with the minute that PSG, uh, me, the Barcelona deal fell through, a day or two later, he was a PSG player. So that's how quick all this kind of a thing happened. But I feel like the biggest winners in all of this is uh, my, my United. Yes, Juventus must have got Ronaldo off their wage bill and stuff like that too. But it's going to be a big loss to financially too for them too because that's a big chunk of money that they're going to lose in terms of like commercially too. But you can say they save it from the wages too. So, NK, I mean... I mean, I, I, I agree. I feel like Ronaldo, you know, every aspect is um, what we needed if we're saying that we want to win a title this season. You know, we finished third two seasons ago. We finished second last season. The only way we're going to be making progress for a lot of our fans is to say, you know what, we need to win a title, trophies, not finish lower than second, even win the Premier League or even give a later push. And right now, having Cristiano Ronaldo is that guy that we needed to help us enable us to do that. And on top of that, You've seen Ronaldo, I mean, you've seen Real Madrid pull out 200 million in what way, however they've done it. I don't know whether it be a loan or whether they've had money or whatever they've done to go and get Mbappe. It makes you think like, I know that Haaland's got a back close, but it doesn't make me feel that he's only going to come to, Man- he's got to want to come to Manchester United in order for us to have sort of a clear shot at him. Everyone's going to be after him and we can't guarantee that Haaland or even Kane's going to be you know, playing at Manchester United next season because when teams want a player really bad, they're going to find that money. Um, and we saw it with the whole Mbappe thing. And it's just, it's it's just, even with Arsenal, they're the top spenders in this league. And, you know, everyone labels Arsenal as the team with no money. But yeah, you know, and they will still be seen as that team that didn't really spend because they bought in, in some ways because I feel like there's a lot of emphasis on a team that spends a lot of money on one player rather than a team that spends little bits of money on, on multiple players. So, But on to George Mendes, though. And I'll move on to the midfield t- topic now um, with Karma Venga. So um, I read an article from the man himself, Fabrizio. He said that um, he just gave him a bit more clarity about um, Karma Venga. So he said that um, it was PSG, Man United and Real Madrid in the race for Karma Venga. But the player said himself, I want to go to Real Madrid. And um, as you can see, you know, we wanted him. We were really interested in Manchester United. He held out and held out. The club was adamant that he's not going to go for free. He was playing it cool and calm and collected because he knew his destination. So it's almost playing out like that Mbappe thing. Um, But he didn't want to come to Manchester United. So I feel like in certain ways we have kind of dodged a bullet because we want to be getting players that want to play for us we don't want to be in a situation where he comes we develop him and then he's off to another club when we've put in all of the hard work secondly we don't want to be in a position where we're spending 30 million or plus um like we have with um donny van der beek where we spent 40 million and he can't get into the team because he's young and it's an easy excuse to bench and we need guys that can come into the fold now and make a difference. It's not like to say that we've got the star quality that Manchester United, you know, fans or the team actually wants in midfield right now. So that's a good thing. But I'll get on to the point about uh, George Mendes again. So George Mendes, he's actually uh, he's under his agency is um, Ruben, Ruben Neves. Now, Ruben Neves, you know, um, being under his agency could kind of make the deal run a bit smoothly. You know, next season, you know, it's been tooted around 40, 45 million or whatever will be enough to bring in Ruben Nevers. What's your thoughts on the sort of midfield, defensive midfield situation? We talked about it a bit earlier. Um, obviously, you know, we're linked with the Monaco guy, Chiamini. We're linked to Declan Rice. We're linked to uh, who else? Uh, Ruben Neves and 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 Sal Niguez. Who do you want to see in that midfield? Um, whether it be Jan or whether it be in the summer, um, partnering pop. Or you know what? To not- be to be honest with you, at the beginning of the summer, my favorite has always been Declan Rice. You know, because I felt like the way United are kind of like our our transfer strategy has always been 
we either get the best of the best of British or we get the best of the world. You know, if you look at like, you know, we got Luxo, we got yeah. Harry Maguire too, you know, we got like Sancho, we got Rashford. Like the English talent is, is just there. We we are more likely to kind of like form a whole England first living in our team, you know. And I didn't want players to kind of like come in and kind of like fell out of place. You know, like obviously Basuma, for example, he's good and everything, but if you just look at it, his connection there will not be great, except for like Eric Bayer, who's kind of like African too. But I don't know, you just, you don't know, he's going to fit into it, but I feel like he speaks a bit of French too. But Declan Watts has always been like my first choice too. And then, you know, I watched Indidi against uh, West Ham. Because, you know, I've heard about how great Indidi is, but, you know, it's a certain place to like, let's not uh, be careful. Like, we hear that how good they are, but we don't actually get a chance to actually watch them in a whole full 90 minutes game because not every game that we get to like watch like that. Like Basuma, for example, I have not really seen him play a full 90 minutes, so I don't know how he is off the ball. His highlights is very deceiving, you know. Mm. Highlights is very deceiving, but obviously people are talking about them, you 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 could see. Mm. But I watched that West Ham game and then that West Ham game was more or less like the Clan Rice versus it did, you know, the holding role and everything. Look, let's start go about it. They, they did get they did get battered because they had a man sent off. But I saw what Indidi was doing. He he more or less made that Leicester backline look good, you know. And sometimes that's what you, you talk about making defensive look good than they are. Yeah, I saw in the way he was he was running to he covered like. The left back, he cover like the right back. He just make sure that when the, the position that you actually kind of like before you get to the center defenders, you take a different approach that you, you give like the, your center back more chance defending than we are used to in my United. He done the job so great. Declan Rice, don't get me wrong, he is very good and everything, but mobile, I haven't seen him how he is mobile. He's greater protecting it in possession too. He's very good at kind of like spreading the pass and everything. But when it comes to like mobile, because I feel like United always need players that will have that energy around them too. Both of them now, without question of that, both of them can do the job very well too. Price wise, Declan Rice is going to be more higher than Indeedy because let's face it, if you buy Declan Rice, you buy him, and if injuries doesn't prevent it, he's more going to spend his best years at United. With Indeedy, you just never know how things are going to feel because some some of those players too by the time they kind of like 28, 30 they just start to kind of like want to move elsewhere or their performance kind of like drop down and everything like that but in the next like two, three, four years if you look like that I would probably say indeed Ruben Alves he's good but I don't know if he have what it takes to survive in that United mentality United is a big club you know Mm. Just because someone is doing it for things like Wolves or whatever, it doesn't mean that they can do it there. He doesn't even get into the Portuguese national team. He does not get into... Because I watched the, what do you call it? The European Championship. He was not starting. He was not starting. And if you are that good, you should be starting for your national team. Or you should be finding a way to be in there. You know, and that's what... Declan Rice played for England. He's used to the pressure. Yes, he played for West Ham. So you can say he's not like expectation, but he played for England. He used to that expectation, you know. I don't know about Ruben. I feel like Ruben is gonna should be our third choice. If you don't get Declan Rice or you go don't get Didi, he can equally do the job too. But those two guys are my guys too. Those two guys are my guys. The way how I say it is, I've been a harsh on Declan because I don't think he was at the level that I wanted for Manchester United now, but. At the same time, and obviously his price tag and his price tag was definitely putting me off. Um, but at the same time, Declan is a very young lad. He's 22 years old. And, you know, he's he's basically got... I can see why we're linked to Declan Rice. One, he's got experience in the Prem. He's, you know, he's playing for West Ham game in, game out. We've shown that he's not, you know, injury prone at the minute. We've shown that he can go week in, week out playing games. Someone that's reliable, someone that's disciplined, Someone that, you know, covers the defence. We're talking about his in-game sort of attributes and play. He protects the defence, you know, really well. He's very, he's like, positional sense is very much sort of, um, he's aware. Um, and he's got a bit of everything in terms of he can defend, he can pass. 
You know what he I mean? Can he's, shoot he, too. He, he can shoot, he can get forward at times and, and bump forward and, and link up play and all that stuff. And he's good in the air too, because he, he played in defense before too. So yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so he, he has he has got those attributes and th- there's a benefit and obviously the national team and he's just knowing like the players. But then I look at and then I look at some other de- defensive midfielders like you know Wilfred and Diddy may not be as good on the ball as Declan Rice or bombing forward as Declan Rice and supporting the attack and play. But what he is is probably better, in my opinion, of uh, more defensively. He's better at um, sort of covering blades of grass, um, in, in my opinion. He's physically stronger. Um, and he's, he's, he's just someone that I feel like, in terms of giving our midfield a bit of bite, a bit of um, sort of solidarity in that midfield, he's going to be the one to bring it. You know, we need that. And that's if you're looking... I mean, I want that combative midfielder type guy. So that's why I'm so, like, you know, it Wilfred and Diddy. Then you've got, like, the likes of your Basumas, who, again, I ain't watched a lot as well because he plays for Brighton and a lot of their games are coming on 3pm and you don't really get to watch the full night minutes. It's just highlights. So like you said, it's can be misleading. But Basuma, I feel like, yes, he is a bit more, again, defensively, on par or slightly better than um, Declan Rice. Um, positionally, he's, he's again, he's, he's sound. Um, but probably attacking wise, this is where Declan Rice takes it. In terms of partial range, Declan Rice is probably better in that sense. You know, all of the, you know, in terms of that, that intricacies and, and a, the acute passing here and there, it's probably better in that sense. Declan Rice, I think he's got a bit of everything, Declan Rice. And then you've got to Ruben Neves, and Ruben Neves is a guy that I've watched. Ruben Neves is 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 really good on the ball. He's really good on the ball. He can pass. He can pick up pick up players. He's someone that's naturally keeps the game you know flowing. Um, he's like a Donny Van der Beek in a sense where he can he, you know he can pass nicely, but he's a little bit more defensive, I would say, than Donny Van der Beek is. Um, but he's not that DM type person that Manchester United needs. I feel like he's actually someone that you'll put alongside a defensive midfielder. Um, and, and for that reason, I mean, it's only limiting down to three players for me, and that is um, Ndidi, Besuma, and Declan Rice. I mean, I don't, I won't mind if we went in for Declan Rice. I just didn't want us to be paying astronomical prices like 100 million, 120 million for a guy that I still feel needs to develop, needs to be that player that the price yes. sort of, you know, like it represents. And right now, he's a, he's a guy that is probably worth. Uh, 60 to 70 million, you know, in my opinion. But yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a, as I said to you, he's an England international too. And the thing about Declan Rice still is, look, he bats onto the scene, I feel like two, three years ago, where he was supposed to go represent uh, Ireland. He played for a couple of games for Ireland and England. Like, nah, you're too good for these people. Yeah. Then he came there too. He has been developing from like year in and a year out. It's not like, Oh, he have a deep help form and everything. Sometimes I for, I forget that he's only twenty two. He's twenty two. Sometimes I really forget that he's, he's only twenty two. And he did it too. He's just very young too. But as I said, both of them equally can kind of like do the job and everything. But I feel like in terms of like the environment and because you know only yes he's good with like player management and everything where you go. But it's about the the, the environment that you build there too. It will be easy for him to kind of like slot into that team because he got all his like. England, England guy there, they already know how he, he plays because he played with like Luke Shaw and Maguire all the time, so they just know him too. So I feel like he would just he, when he comes in, it's just easy for him to just be communication wise. He know how to th- th- these guys know his game, and then it's v- vice versa too, you know. So it will be just be easy for him to kind of like slot him compared to like Indeedy coming in and you know have to kind of like make the bond and everything. I'm not saying that like, he's not going to do it, but yeah, he just do that too. And I'm very interested to also for Declan Rice to also get some European experience too because West Ham are in Europa League this season too. So he's going to get some European experience too. So it just kind of like good to just see how it goes. Hopefully the money makes sense next summer because I feel like he'll be United number one target for that defensive mate. But we wait and see. It's, it's, a, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go. So you you talked to me earlier about um, a team, Manchester United's team, and how the lineup looked like maybe three years ago, three four years ago, twenty seventeen, maybe twenty eighteen. Only only first game. Is that only first game? Yeah, when 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 Mourinho got sacked, 
and only took over against Cardiff and we won I think 5-1 that was his starting 11 for that game so I'm going to talk about his starting lineup. So in the fit, in the goalkeeper position, we had David De Gea. Right back was Ashley Young. Um, Victor Lindelof was on the right side of the centre-back pairing. We had Phil Jones playing that game as well, alongside Victor Lindelof. Luke Shaw on the left. And in the middle, it was a 4-3-3. So in the middle, we had Andara, Ander Herrera on the right side of a three. Matic in the middle and then Pogba on the left side of that. And then up front, it was Lingard to the right, Rashford and Martial to the left. Now, we obviously went on to smash Cardiff 5-1, but I and we had a crazy run under Oli when he first touched down as well, so we was killing teams, we were scoring that crazy. It was a breath of fresh air because he was actually scoring and it was attacking and everything was going right for Oli. He's a lucky guy as well. Now, and I've always thought of it like this, so I thought of Manchester United as being a team that, you know, never quite had all the components and we still probably haven't had don't have all the components because we're still lacking the midfielder defensive midfielder but we've got a lot of the components and i feel personally that we've got enough to lift trophies trophies and i'm expectant of our team lifting trophies this season it just has to be um now you fast forward again from all his first game now entering into the new season manchester united has got on the right back you know, Aaron Wan Basaka, who's the best defensive midfielder in the world, in my opinion. You know, next to him, we've got Varane, who's top three best centre backs in the world, in my opinion. Next to him, Maguire, who's still probably one of the top 10 centre backs. Um, is that safe to say? Yeah, there's no, there's not a lot of good ones. There's not right out there. I would there's say no probably top 10. There. I would say yeah, that as well. Ten, top 10, top 10, yeah. He should, Arguably, he should be in the top 10. And then on the left side, Luke Shaw, who's come on leaps and bounds from that Luke Shaw that we saw in sort of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's sort of first game. Then in the midfield, we've got, you know, your Pogba's. Uh, again, it's not really changed because we've still got Matic and Herrera's gone, but we've got Scott McTominay, Fred, Bruno, Matic and stuff like that. It's not really that great. Um, and then up front, up front, we've got worlds, we've got we've got worlds of talent. You know, I don't even need to get into it. So this is a team that's come on leaps and bounds. And um, for me, like I said, I, I, I've, I've said my expectations. But with this lineup, anyway, with this team, sorry, what is your expectations uh, for the Newcastle game? Who do you see starting this game? Obviously, certain decisions are a little easier right about now because we've got a few knocks and injuries like that. Rashford and maybe, maybe Sancho may not start, but there's news saying that he may start. Um, but what's your... Given everyone being so, what's your expectations against Newcastle, and then what's your sort of more longer term expectations after that? Just like you know, with the team that we've got. Yeah. So you Newcastle know, first. Newcastle first. Newcastle. I don't know. I feel like Sancho should be fit. From what we're hearing, I feel like Sancho should be fit. Greenwood too. He's a guy too that's kind of like giving a lot of like the problems too. Rashford. He's not fit yet, so we don't know yet. Martial too, I feel like Martial going forward, he need to adjust where he want to play because that number nine position is gone. It's gone. Like, it would be hard for him to get a game as, as a striker up there. So I feel like him and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer just need to sit down and just say, like, look, getting a game at that number nine is going to be hard for you this season. And the only way I can guarantee you game time is to shift you onto the left. And I feel like that's the conversation that he's going to understand anyway too because if Ronaldo don't play, who is clearly number nine, you got Cavani there. Who, let's face it, last season, he was ahead of Martial because Martial was injured. He was doing the, the job. And even when Martial came, he was still the guy preferred to start the games. You know? So, you got that too. And then even there's a certain Mr. Greenwood too that has been playing very well too at the number nine thing. But, he ain't going to be fighting these guys there yet too. So he probably going to shift onto the right-hand side. If everybody is fit, if everybody is fit, now, it's, as, it's hard for me to say this, but Greenwood will drop out of my starting 11 if everybody is fit. And I only say this because of how Ronaldo is. Now, i probably go with Rashford on the left-hand side. If he's fit, Rashford goes on the left. Ronaldo as my number nine. And I'll put Sancho on the right-hand side. And Sancho gay ahead 
of Greenwood because I feel like the, with the way Ronaldo is, Sancho will be the, one of the perfect guys to supply him with the ball because he, he know how to pick guys up. You look at that goal Ronaldo scored against uh, Portugal. Those two crosses, that kind of a kidney. Look, Greenwood is good, but he can cross. And that's one of the things when Cavani play, he kind of a struggle with that because a lot of people, they're not putting that ball in the box for him. Greenwood, he get it. He just wanted to just look up and take that shot. Now, when you got guys like Ronaldo there, he will want someone to be feeding him. And I feel like Sancho, especially the way he played with like Haaland and everything, he's used to at that kind of like number nine in the box taking chances. And he'll be the perfect guy to be in there putting those balls in the box. So for that, I, I, I see him starting. If he's fit and he get used to the premiership, I see him starting. I, I would love them to throw him against Newcastle anyways, you know. Throw him against Newcastle there. Let him play. And you know what? Stick him on the left-hand side for the Newcastle game. I'll start him on the left-hand side, put Greenwood on the right-hand side, and then put Ronaldo in, a, a, what they call it, centre of the pitch. For that Newcastle game, because Rashford is not fit yet. I don't don't start Marshall on the left hands because he's just not there. James is gone. I don't think Pogba can go into the left because we are short in the middle of pitch too. So I think I feel like it will be Sancho, Ronaldo, and uh, Greenwood over there. Oli is no. I don't think Oli is ready enough to play a four four two, which he did hint about four four two, and I feel like that's something we're gonna do too going forward but yeah that'll be my top three yeah Sancho on the left Ronaldo in the number nine and then you just cannot leave Greenwood out just yet so I'll ship Greenwood to on the right hand side that's the the three for yeah me. so it's interesting so I, I, it's a bit confusing for me so I mean obviously the center the, the defensive thing is sort of sorted I don't know why Varane was on the bench against France um, for France um I don't know they if just give him, they just give him a raise. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, he hasn't they just, played. They just, they just rotating. They just rotating. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, for for me, obviously, it's Varane and you know uh, some Maguire, Luke Shaw, and 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 Aaron Wan Bissaka. They're going to be the defense permanent going forward, regardless. Um, and then in the midfield, it's a bit of a tricky one because again, for me, it's like is Pogba going to go on the left or is he going to play in the midfield um, against Newcastle? Newcastle is a team where. We can boss them. We, we're not going to be stressed about, you know, the other team sort of pressing us like that and us, you know, being worried about, the, you know, the, the, the sort of the press. So for us, I feel like Pogba is going to be one of those guys that can play as a centre, you know, two-man pivot in the midfield for us, which will allow us to bring in, a, you know, a wing on the right. But then, and on the left, sorry, a proper sort of wide man. Um, but then again, I don't know about Sancho. I know I heard that he's gonna be could be quite could be ready for the game, but is he gonna oh, yeah, yeah, he's gonna be ready. They just say it's a knockback, it wasn't a serious thing. But the thing is right now, Rashford is you know what do you know Rashford what I mean? Off. Because Rashford's off, right? But with this team that we've got, Manchester United doesn't only doesn't need that much of an excuse now. Like if he hears, oh you've got a knock. If if it was me being a manager of Manchester United, if I've heard that, oh you've picked up a knock, but you'll be ready. Unless your name is Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> For me, I'm thinking, look, Greenwood is knocking on the door. Greenwood is firing Pogba. He got five assists playing left, left, whatever, you know, attack, like close up to the pitch, left wing or whatever it is. For me, I'm thinking, damn, like, we're up against Newcastle is going to be defending for a lot of that game. Is it? Yeah, they're going to be attacking, but for me, I'm thinking, why not play Pogba on the left against Newcastle since he's so effective in the first couple of games. Look, I'll tell you what, if Pogba play on the left against Newcastle, then we should sell him. We should let him go. We should let him go next season because we ain't going to need him. If Pogba play on the left-hand side against Newcastle, let's just say Sancho's fake, Greenwood is fake, or whatever. Now, look, Pogba, we are, the problem with Pogba has been that he does not work in the middle against the big teams because we have to defend. Now, if you're telling me against Newcastle, we're going to have to act at home. He's not going to be good enough to play in the middle because we have to defend. Then I'm sorry. That guy needs to go next No, summer. but there's another aspect of it. So it's not necessarily that 
it's it's in terms of breaking down these teams that do the low block. Like having Pog Pogba's one of those guys where we need him. Clearly sees that he, he's been operating. Is so- new is Newcastle at home? You don't need to break Newcastle <laughs> down at home. Well, if you say Newcastle away, I understand that. This is Newcastle at home. But, but let me let me tell On you this. On the day that Ronaldo me, is making his debut, I this know. man don't have enough to keep us <laughs> 90 minutes. I don't care what you say. We don't need to break Newcastle down at home. No, but, but, but my we thing is, is this. Let, let, let me, let me, let me say this. Pogba, like you have Bruno supply, Pogba supply close up the pitch to Ronaldo. I see Ronaldo getting two, two, three goals, like two goals in that game against Newcastle. Or, or you know, he could even get his hat trick. He can even do a, do you know what I mean? Like a Bruno Fernandez get a hat trick in the first game because Pogba all he does is supply. He doesn't try to go and shoot when he's up there. All he let tries to do supply in the middle. Is, is pick, let him do it from the middle. But, but, but let me get my, let me get. So I mean, I would like to see him in the middle next to a good defensive midfielder, like a quality one. But we don't have that, right? And my thing is, is this: is Sancho's not fully? Is Sancho's fit, right? And even with Sancho, if Sancho's fit, right? I still feel Sancho may need some time to get up to full scratch. Right now, for me, so far, right now. From what I've seen, it would be it would be Pogba on the left, just in terms of form. Pogba on the left, yep. mm-hmm. Greenwood on the right, and then I even gonna argue with Cristiano. Cristiano will just go on top. Do you know what I mean? That's just based off form because in the first game, Pogba scored. F- and then who played in the middle for the you then? First, what do you mean in the middle? Like in the midfield? Yeah. No, in the Bruno midfield. And who else? In the midfield, Bruno, Fred and who? It will be Bruno, it will be Fred, obviously, and it'll probably be someone like Matic. Do you know what I mean? Like Matic. It's just one of those ones where, because I yeah. know, just that's just just that's just space. I know Matic hasn't got the legs. I know Matic can't last play back game games back to back. He can't do the full ninety minutes even. Yeah. But for me, I, know, I just but you feel know like what? if 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 only play Pogba on the left, he is setting himself up for a very difficult season because in the next like what month or so, you're gonna have all your wingers fit. That's including Masha even trying to play on the left hand side too. Yeah. So if you don't start game Pogba used to playing in that center of midfield, because you Bro, know he's been Pogba doing it for, he's been doing it for five years. I think it's not even necessarily him. I yeah, just feel like it's his yeah, part. This is a time where you are gaining options. You are not gonna tell me that Paul Pogba has to now compete on the left hand side with uh, Rashford, uh, Masha, him. These are three of arguably like our best players too, fighting for one place. That's not good enough. Mm. I'm just saying, majority of the time, Pogba has to play more. Like this season, Pogba has to play 80% of his game in the midfield. It doesn't get any better trying to get him used to that position than Newcastle at home. There are certain games that, yes, you have to go. Newcastle United should be beating them on 80% gear or 80% or perhaps the 70% because the fans <laughs> are going to do a lot of the job for us. At home, the fans do a lot of the oh, job we're gonna for need them. The we're going to need them really bad because our home form is not been as good as our away form. Now we got the fans. That was because that the fans were not there. The fans are here now. Yeah. You know, these kind of games are the games where you play Pogba in the middle. You don't need him m- that much defending. You, it's a game you don't need him much defending. You get someone there to just... We don't, we're not, we're not going to do a lot of defending against Newcastle. You just need that one guy there to just stop that, their counter attack in terms of position wise. You know, stop the counter attack. And when we are in the position like we were against Wolves, pass the ball to your, a Man United player, not to a damn Newcastle player like Fred was doing. That's what you need. I will be shocked if Paul Pogba don't start that game in the middle. Mm. I will be shocked if Pogba there. You know, don't start I, that I, game I, in, I, in the middle. I'm excited. Because if that Pogba way. don't start in the middle, then we are literally just, you know what? Personally, it would be a perfect game to even start Van der Beek with Paul Pogba in there. As I said, as I told you, Newcastle are a good team, but this is a game that we should be getting three points. Not only getting three points too, but literally three points with three goals, just like the least game. So more likely, you pick. Your center back, your 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 center, your, your back five pick yourself. Your front two, you put you, you pull your front guys there, Ronaldo. It'll be interesting to what he does with uh Cavani, Cavani. too. 
it will be interesting what he does with Cavani because this is where we are going to find out Oli. I think like he's always talk about yeah he doesn't do the coaching, but he need to pick the starting eleven. I feel like Oli. I feel like the decisions made. Look, Cavani gave up his shirt number and he's given up his position. It, there's not one person in the world outside of Messi that can feel upset and you know what I mean that can even make a manager like you know anyone think you know this isn't the right thing to do I feel like the decision has been made it's just how do we incorporate like you said Cavani especially this season with you where you've got Ronaldo and this is interesting because with Cavani with someone like Harry Kane or if you get a Haaland these are guys that you don't sub you don't bring them off once they're there they play the full 90 minutes Ronaldo once he's there he plays the full 90 minutes Cavani can only play I feel in that position as a number nine, he's too, he's past it to be playing on the wings and doing that job like he used to do. He can't do on the wing. He can't. I know. I know. I see him when he comes on, try to sometimes rotate. He's only playing there, and that's what Oli kind of like hinted that maybe in some games we're gonna mm. play a four four two, and I feel like if they play a four four two, mm. which I don't know how he's gonna do it, but maybe mm. he's gonna play uh, Cavani and Ronaldo up top, maybe put Sancho on the right because you can't play no one else on the right because Bruno cannot play on the right because that would be too attacking put there and the middle maybe try Bruno and Pogba in, in that there where Pogba plus a six Bruno plus a eight where he has to do a bit more defensive job but you know what that's another thing too people talk about Pogba doing a like, defensive job or not doing anything when was that time Bruno done a defensive job because we're talking about playing one holding guy in there and when you play one holding guy and you play both Bruno and Pogba that means that both Bruno and Pogba has to do a bit of defensive job is Bruno going to be doing a defensive job too? as I said I mean Bruno I walks, Bruno tracks back and he, he does a lot of running but tracking in terms of back in defensive in job Pogba tracks back too Pogba in terms of back too. ball winning and in terms of doing that yeah you've got Bruno who loses the ball at a high rate because he's always doing the riskier passes and then you've got Pogba sometimes he will you know you've seen it many times where he has amazing games but then he gets dispossessed because he's getting dispossessed in the middle it's sort of from midfield straight and Bruno, Bruno get away with it because they say oh yeah Bruno's scoring goals if Pogba is getting assist too then Pogba should be they should leave Pogba alone with his Every, defensive everyone, too. everyone should be playing a defensive role like if you look at these well-drilled teams, like if you look at like, you know, your Liverpool, even the Barcelonas, you know, the great Barcelona at the time before, you know, where they are now, you saw them like, and they all pressed. Do you know what I mean? It was relentless and City played, like Pep had, has City playing that way where it's relentless pressing. I mean, like Man United, don't do that. It's not necessarily about, the thing of where City can get away with playing, you know, just one DM and all of that thing and and have, you know, your Gundogans or whatever in the midfields because, he has the whole team collectively pressing. It's like he's got 11 defenders right. on a pitch at times when they're all out of possession of the ball. So it's just like, until right. Man United get to that point where we can start doing that, for me, it's all about personnel. We need the best personnel in the world and we need to get the best defence. Like, I look at Pochettino, right? And one thing, one one of the things he's really known for is how hard work his team is, how hard they run. Oh, uh, right always... We ain't even talking about Poch. Poch is an enemy now, bro. Poch is uh, an no, enemy he's now. A, he's an enemy now. We're going to meet him in the Champions League final. Don't worry he's about that. He's an enemy now. But he's an enemy now. Do, but you know what? I'll we tell need, you We what. need hard workers, man. We need hard we workers. We need hard workers, but if Pogba ain't playing in the middle against Newcastle of all teams, then there's something wrong because against Wolves, you put him in the middle against Wolves where, where you would say that it was going to be a struggle more. So definitely, you know what? Definitely, I feel like going forward, Pogba don't even have a chance playing on their wings with the amount of players that we got. No, but so you, know, Newcastle, you, know, you know what my worry is though? is when we played Wolves, Wolves is naturally always a difficult game anyway. I showed you some of our previous results. Anyone yeah. that's watching can watch it. Like... Cavani came on on like the 55th minute, 60, somewhere around that 60th minute. How many chances did he get? Do you understand? He's a world-class attacker. Ronaldo is one of, he's a goal. But what I'm trying to say is, is if that supply isn't coming in, Sancho was on the pitch then. Do you understand? Like we had guys, we had Bruno on the pitch there. We had Pogba in the middle there. These guys, this guy wasn't getting supplied. Our attack wasn't getting supplied. We luckily got Greenwood, left foot, right foot, cut and smash one smash and grab for my thing is it's just I don't want it to be where Cristiano's up top he's not getting a supply because Sancho's not fully up and running yet not fully sort of there then you've got someone like Pogba 
who's sitting too deep where he's not allowed to go forward and support. And then you've got someone who's going to be playing on the left in that sense. Then you've got Greenwood, who's getting, he, he cuts in and then he shoots. Like, he's not really an assister like that. He's not a winger. For me, it's just like, it's not necessarily about worrying about the team attacking us and worried about them. Um, you know, they need to play two DMs or anything like that. It's about the fact of we need more creati- creat- creativity to break these low these low these low um, low block teams. For me, right. we need as we need to learn from our mistakes last season and think how can we do these things differently. How can we provide the supply? A lot of it is about supply. The reason why I wanted Sancho is because of the supply. Because Cavani, you supply that guy any day, he'll be banging in two goals again. Oh, but he is not the supply. We you, you talk about supply, 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 but it's not the supply. It is got to do with the manager. Look, the manager only gives teams too much respect sometimes. And that's something that he needs to stop. Against Wolf, I, I get it out. Against Wolf, we always have this kind of like cage game and everything. So there was a bit of like respect there for, for him where you're probably yeah. going to instruct like your midfielders not to make runs into the box because he's going to tell a lot. They are very far. They're going to come. Because if you look at the second half here, Pogba was directly told not to go more forward because Fred needed that help because he could not do like that job alone. He just could not handle Wolves at all. He was giving the ball away. They were The defender didn't want to give him the ball because they didn't trust him. And even he lost confidence getting the ball. Yeah. He just, you can just tell that after like 15 minutes, he just did not want to be on the pitch for it. Mm. So Pogba then had to come deep to collect to collect the ball, which is what he don't want to be doing. Yeah. He wants someone to be getting the ball from deep, giving it to him a bit further up the pitch so that he can be finding your guys like your Brunos, your strikers, or even stringing into the wings and stuff like that. But unfortunately, like, the Wolves gives us away. As I said to you, when you go away, it's very hard to go away and dominate games. If you want to dominate games, you need guys on the on the ball. We don't have those kind of bad guys. Going forward like this season too, people, I know as United fans, we are very cautious about where we want the team kind of like finish and everything too. But today, I sat down and I, I just realized that we have problems, but a lot of these teams that are challenging for the leagues too all have similar problems that we have. City, you could say, got a big problem not gaining a number nine. They are lacking in that position. That can be a difference making from them winning the league and not winning the league. They're still that scoring league. goals, though. Fluid. Yeah. Bro, everybody's going to score goals against uh, Norwich and 10 men Arsenal. They are going to do that. You saw their game against Tottenham. Even 11 so men Arsenal. It <laughs> comes down to when you play, when you go away and team set up. At home, you can have a comfortable ride. You know? Look at when uh, Tottenham set up against City. They struck... That game against uh, Tottenham, you could say if they had a striker like, say, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, a Kane in their team for Man City against Tottenham, they win that game easily. They win that game, you know. So City are lacking in in their team at number nine, where sometimes it's gonna need it because you're gonna have those games where it's gonna be hard and you're gonna need that one nil grinding like we done against Wolves. This is when those kind of are coming. They are lacking that. They are lacking that one nil grand thing. Last season, their centre backs were helping them with that score one and we defend. You know, so how many times did Stones get a uh, goal from set pieces for them to grind out? Diaz doing the same thing too. They lack it. Like, it will be interesting to see whether their centre backs can still get those neck of goals. It will be interesting to see. Then you look at Chelsea. I don't care. Chelsea, I don't care what people are saying. Chelsea defensively there's a problem there. They saw Zumba and did not replace him. Did I, is he gone fully? Is he gone, yeah? He went to West Ham and they couldn't get the severe guy down the line. Oh, so it went through then? Because, yeah, they didn't get their um, Kunde. Um, because yeah, his, his battle uh, clause is even higher than I thought it was. I mean, they were quoted. Right. Today was quoted like And they didn't get one. that. Now, you hmm. talk about, yes, if Tego Silva get injured, one injury to that back line and there's problems there. Yes, Silva Bay they, 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 they go Christian Sen there too. They go Ashra Kota, who normally play in the back three too and everything too. One injury there distract the whole Chelsea back line. So you can tell Chelsea are lacking in that back line position. It's because, too. They, it's because they play a back three, right? So 
it's just like it, it feels like the sort of backup options is not a lot because they're playing the back three. But to be honest, like I think like Rudiger, um, Aspid, Aspilicueta, Christiansen, and then they've got uh, do you know what I mean? That was, those are good options for me. Those are good options for me. And then they are good they've also options, got Chabaloa, but... unless he's gone. I don't know. Um, well, he's a kid. He's a, he's he's a young kid. He can do the job. You talking about people when you're talking about winning a title a title it's a squad game it's not a first living game it's a squad game you're gonna have injuries you're gonna have suspensions and stuff like that and that's when it, it matters the more like right now for example Rhys James yeah his record he's gonna miss the next game the question is who played on the right wing now Ashley Potter gonna have to go play there he is good but offensively he's not good to kind of like do that kind of like job you know and that's where it kind of like come in. They are center back on the on their first level is good. But one injury there, for example, Rudiger. If Rudiger get injured, that's it. You are missing a lot on that back three. So say what you want to say about oh yeah, Chelsea team is all set. They lack in that department too. And that is why they were so willing to get a defensive cover there. Because they know that what they got is good. But for to sustain it for the whole season. It's going to be very difficult for them to kind of like do. And then you got United too, where we are lacking in that defensive midfield there too. We are lacking and lacking and lacking there too. So that's our biggest and problem. Liverpool, too. Liverpool only made one signing as well. So they Liverpool bitch. made it. Liverpool, sure. Liverpool problem is not defensively because defensively they kind of like got that covered too. Their problem now is the middle of the pitch. You know, they got Fabinho there, they got Thiago there. But the Liverpool play with such a high intensity. And these guys ain't used to that kind of a high intensity too, too. And I feel like their strikers too, apart from Mo Salah that you can you can rely on to get a ghost. And money. They, they, money has been getting odd ones here and yeah, there. This money, so far. Bro, money has been out of form for a very long time. Look at look. And you know what? The perfect example was against him and Chelsea. Chelsea was a man down and Liverpool could not get a goal. The old Liverpool, him and Chelsea, bro, they could have found a way. They Liverpool got a goal-scoring problem and I don't know why they have such a goal-scoring problem. It was the same last season too. People were talking about, oh yeah, they were out of defensive too. Jota was getting a lot of their goals. Once he got injured, Liverpool goes dried out. It dried out. They have they have been having strike. You know what? Their problem has been there. Fabinho, he wasn't scoring when they won the league. It was always Salam money, Salam money, and then the people were talking about him not scoring, him not scoring. He's for two years now. He has not been able to chip in on the goals, mm. and now it's time to affect them too. Because one of them, money, Salah, one of them get out of form, and that team just there. So out of those four teams, everybody got their own problem. It's about who can deal with their problem the best. This season is a very open race. Open, open race. Look, open race, I I'm, I'm excited. I feel like even if we done Scott McTominay and Fred and sacrificed Pogba and used him in the ways that we did last season where he was playing off the left at times, so or he was playing as partnership, as part of a pivot, I feel like we can go on to win it just because we've added on Jaden Sancho and we've added on Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the greatest players in the world and one of the best centre-backs in the world. I feel like if we had this team last season still playing Scott McTominay and Fred, we probably would have been lifting a title right now. So that's just my opinion. But you know what? We're going to see this season as it goes on, how it goes. But you know what, guys? We've overrun. England's playing right now. Jesse Link, Jay Ling's banged in a goal. About, what's it, 16, 8th minute or whatever like that. Well, well just look at Jesse and, Lingard's and, and play. You know what? He's look, part look, of the United team. We ain't talked about We ain't talked about Jaylings. We ain't talked about Jaylings. Look, his, he, he's banged in a goal. It's going on right now. So we're going to go and watch that. But guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching the video to the end. If you're watching it to the end, you're riding. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and support the thing. Follow on Instagram at OT99 underscore banter room at Twitter at 99 banter and tiktok at 99 at ot 99 banter room all one word remember to like comment subscribe support the thing share and all that jazz until then we'll see you next time peace